Fish Go Pongan on Quain Edition of God's Mundo Dam. My name is Sandy Boucher. I'm Red Thunderbolt Woman of the Loon Clan and a proud member of Seine River First Nation in Northern Ontario. And I'm here today once again as your facilitator of the path away from lateral violence. Last week in lesson three, we discussed some pretty important terminology, basically prejudice, discrimination, and oppression. We looked at the definitions and more importantly, the difference between these terms. This week, we're looking at another term, internalized oppression. We're gonna look at the definition. I'm gonna give you many examples of internalized oppression to make sure you understand it. And we're even going to look at how it functions in a community and in the individual. Before we talk specifically about internalized oppression, let's look at the definition of oppression one more time, just to refresh our memories. So oppression is a cruel or unjust exercise of power. Minorities were historically subject to oppression by those in power and unfortunately, oppression still exists today, and there are many examples of it. I'm going to share some examples of oppression with you now. And as we go through these slides, I want you to ask yourself, have you seen or heard of such things, whether it's in your community or maybe even on the six o'clock news? Is this new to you? or did you just not realize it was oppression you were hearing about? How about this example? A society says that women are the property of their fathers or husbands. Women are not permitted to wear clothing of their own choosing or to go anywhere without permission from a man. Fathers decide who their daughters will marry and wives must obey their husbands. Or what about this example? Imagine a society exists where people of a certain race are denied opportunities and equality under the law. People within this disfavored race are not permitted to learn to read or to attend school. They have to live in certain designated areas and must do the jobs they are told to do by the leaders of the society. Or how about this example? A society exists where people who believe in a certain set of religious teachings are considered to be inferior to others who accept a state religion. Those who practice their own religious beliefs can be punished or even jailed for their opinions and practices. Does that sound familiar? Or what about this one? Imagine for a moment that a society is under the thumb of a cruel dictator. Anyone who disagrees with the policies of the dictator can be killed for sharing his opinion or voicing disagreement. Can you imagine something like that? Have you heard of something like that? Imagine for a moment, a society is controlled by a small percentage of very wealthy people. The wealthy people deny opportunities to those who are poor. The poor work for almost no wages and struggle to achieve a basic human standard of living, such as having food and shelter. The poor are carefully controlled by the oppressors and prevented from organizing or resisting the will of the wealthy. Can you imagine this? Perhaps you've heard of a society that carefully controls the freedom of speech of all people. The internet is not accessible to the public. Certain books are banned and the media works for the state 
and is permitted to write only the positive news that the state allows to be printed. Have you heard of such an example of oppression? One last example of oppression. Imagine a society that allows migrants to enter its borders, but will not grant them any rights. The migrants are not allowed to participate in the political process and are not protected by the laws that apply to citizens. The migrants can be forced to work for low wages and are denied basic services such as access to food and health care. Can you imagine such a society? Now that you have a very clear understanding of what oppression looks like in many different examples, let's look at what internalized oppression looks like. Now, for the definition, when one group is the object of oppression over long periods of time, the misinformation and lies begin to be normal, customary, routine, and then accepted by the members of the group being discriminated against. This normalness is internalized oppression. In other words, they begin to believe the lies and stereotypes about themselves and about other members in their own group. That's internalized oppression. Now what we're going to do is go back and look at all those examples of oppression, but I've changed them up to reflect what they look like when the oppression is internalized. Remember the example of women being the property of their fathers or husbands? When that oppression is internalized, the women believe they are the property of their fathers and husbands. They ask what they should wear and ask permission before going anywhere. They accept that their father will decide who they marry and that they must obey their husbands. In this case, that's what internalized oppression would look like. Remember this example? A society exists where people of a certain race are denied opportunities and equality under the law. When that oppression happens over a long period of time, it's internalized. And once that happens, people within the disfavored race accept that they're not meant to learn how to read or to even attend school. They accept that they must live in designated areas and must do the jobs they are told to do by the leaders of the society. That's internalized oppression. And what about this example? The certain set of religious teachings that are considered inferior to the state religion. When that oppression is internalized, the people in the group of the alternative religion begin to believe that their own teachings are inferior, and they choose instead to adopt the state religion, condemning their own people for refusing to change. I just described many First Nations communities that condemn traditional indigenous practices. And what about the example of the society run by a cruel dictator? When this oppression is internalized, the people accept that they are not allowed to disagree with the policies of the dictator, and they support the policy that says they will be justifiably killed for having an opinion or voicing disagreement. That's internalized oppression. And what about the example of the society controlled by a small percentage of wealthy people who deny opportunities to the poor? In this example, when the oppression is internalized, the poor accept that they must work for almost no wages 
and that it's their path or destiny to struggle to achieve a basic standard of living. They think the idea of speaking out against the wealthy is foolish and instead remind others that this is just the way it is. Sadly, I just described my own mother. This is internalized oppression. And what about the society that controls the freedom of speech of all the people that belong to it? When this oppression is internalized, the people accept that they don't have access to the internet and they believe that certain books should be banned. They believe the news released by the state without question. They may even go as far as saying the state knows what's best for them. That's internalized oppression. And what about our final example, the society that allows migrants into work without granting them any rights. When this oppression is internalized, the migrants accept that they can't participate in the political process and that they're not protected by the laws that apply to the citizens. The migrants are often incredibly thankful for the low wages they're allowed to earn and they accept that they have no right to health care. That's internalized oppression. Learning this stuff is not about judging anyone, but there's a really good chance you're going to work with someone who is experiencing internalized oppression. You're going to meet people that accept that they're less than others, that they don't have the right to dream of a future or anything more than poverty. They may be very resistant to any kind of traditional teachings or values, often out of fear. They've been taught that stuff is devil worship. And we have to understand where this comes from so we can help them without judging them. I have met many indigenous people who are devout Christians. I'm not about to tell them they're wrong because way back when in their family history, somebody did. Somebody told their ancestors that their traditional teachings were wrong and that they had to become Christians. Our people are now choosing to be Christians and we can accept that without judgment. But all of us need to understand where it came from and how we got here. What is super important to understand is that internalized oppression suffocates any positive self-image we may have, and it does it in one of two ways. The first way is through the individual. This is the little voice inside your head. This is when you've internalize the oppression. So the I can think of a hundred examples. You're considering going back to school and the little voice in your head says, you'll never be able to do that. Smart people do that. White people do that. You could never make it in university. That's internalized oppression. If you're thinking of bidding for a management job and the little voice in your head says, they would never hire you, that's internalized oppression. And when we recognize what that voice is, we can actually get it to shut up. The people you work with as colleagues and as clients probably are suffering from internalized oppression through the individual but they may also be experiencing it from the group. Now remember, internalized oppression is not only believing the stereotypes about you, but about other members in your group. So this may be their mom or dad that told them they would never be able to go to college, their partner who told them they're never going to amount to anything, that they were never going to be successful, that indigenous people aren't successful. 
that's internalized oppression and it's incredibly powerful because it comes from members of our own group. This is not about judgment and I'm going to keep repeating that. What we have to understand is every single member of a First Nations community has been affected by oppression and internalized oppression, whether it's the victim of violence or the perpetrator of violence. And I'm not justifying anything here. I'm just trying to help you understand what you're seeing in front of you. What helps me is to remember there are three natural human reactions to internalized oppression and you are going to recognize these because you can see them in any First Nations community or in any group that's been oppressed for a long time. The first natural human reaction to internalized oppression is violence. And whenever I share this in the seminar, I always think of my son, not because he's been violent in any way, but as a young man, when the world is telling him he's less than, it's a natural reaction to want to scream out no, to vent, to attack something to deal with that frustration. And unfortunately, that is often the woman standing right beside our men. Now women experience and express violence as well, but you can understand where it comes from when you remember what oppression and internalized oppression look like. This is not a healthy reaction. This is something that we have to change and there is a solution. Now let's look at the second way it's expressed the second natural reaction. The second natural human reaction to internalized oppression is what my mom would call a $15 word. It's acquiescence. And what it means is acceptance or giving up. This is the person that says, why even bother? It's never gonna change. Why go to school? They're never going to hire you. Why try to write a book? No one's ever going to buy it. This is our men and women lost to addictions and lost on the streets because they've given up. Everyone thinks violence is so incredibly horrible, and it is. But to me, acquiescence is even scarier. With violence, at least there's still a flame in there that's trying to fight for something different. In acquiescence, that light is at risk of going out. We have to aim for the third natural human reaction. The third reaction, the healthy reaction, non-violent resistance. Anything we do to fight the oppression without violence. This is writing a letter to your MP or MPP. This is walking to, to protest something. This is our chiefs blocking a highway or a railway. This is picketing. This is shooting a music video to talk about the conditions in our communities. And this has to be encouraged because this is the way to end internalized oppression. And now we're coming to the end of lesson four. In your homework this week, you're going to find a quiz that's going to help you look at how much you've been affected by internalized oppression. Please keep in mind, this is not about judgment. I know many successful Indigenous people who took the quiz and never realized how much they had overcome. Wear that like a medal on your chest. It's not something to help pull you down. It's something you should be celebrating because you made it past it. So make sure, please, 
to do your homework. It is vitally important and it may be a quiz you want to use when you're working with your clients in the future. And don't allow yourself to get discouraged. I'm not going to let you finish this course without telling you how to overcome this. It has touched us all and we can get past it. So we can get excited about learning the ways to do that for ourselves, our partner, our clients, our families, and yes, even our communities. Until next week, take care of you. Bye-bye.